right way. But the game's rigged. It ain't made for people like us. So I'm rewriting the rules. I want to ask you, why did you feel that it was important to tell this story at this, at this time? Because uh, it hadn't been told before. We always hear stories about this time, uh, specifically not about, about the crack thing, but, you know, just like cocaine from Miami. We've heard, you know, in New York they made pen in full. I guess that was the crack thing in New York, you know what I mean? But no one's ever made anything about how things changed in, in Los Angeles and the West Side. And so um, when I was thinking about getting into the television business, I was like, what can I do that's very unique, different? Um, I thought about the stories that, you know, I'd seen growing up in Los Angeles before we had bars on our homes, before everybody felt like they had to put fences and make their own homes kind of like mini jails. And when everybody used to play in the street, football, baseball, baseball in the streets, and you know, when, um, you know, the ice cream truck coming at the, in the middle of the day was like the big event of the day. You know, you remember them days? Yeah. And Chili Fritos? <laughs> remember the Pop Rocks? How many people took Pop Rocks and put it in soda and had it explode in their face? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's just like, I was just thinking, like, you know, it's something that would be the, um, part of my, my formative years, childhood memories, but edgy and then that's why I was like okay well you know when people start selling selling drugs that's when things changed and I was thinking well, okay well that, that, that's that's where we can go. Isaiah you you from the day Atlanta yeah. Georgia yeah, Atlanta Atlanta how did you get involved with this project? Well my manager you know she found out about it 2015 when they did the first pilot and I missed out on that one. And uh, so when it came back around for this, you know, for the second run, uh, found out about it. She told me, she's like, hey, you want to audition? I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I, I kind of didn't want to audition, you know, because in Atlanta, you know, in the acting world, it's kind of hard for me and my sister because we're mixed with a thousand different things. They're like, oh, you're not urban enough. So I was like, they're not going to cast me. I don't want to audition. She's like, no, you're going to audition. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to audition. She's like, no, she forced me. So I ended up auditioning, you know. Glad she told me to do that. And then, you know, I'm here. Because right before this, I was, you know, as Dave liked to say, I was, I was cleaning toilets. You know, I was a janitor for two years right like before Snowfall. I don't like to say it necessarily, but you were. It was uh, one of those things where you were. <laughs> he, was, he was like, we were on set, and I was like, what were you doing before this, man? He was like, oh, I was a janitor. And I was like, are you saying three, three weeks ago you were a janitor? And he's like, yeah, man, yeah. I was clean. I was like, wow. Yeah, it's so amazing. it was power of Hollywood, man. It's just crazy, it was crazy. But yeah, that's how. Thank you, my good friend, Miss Poison Ivy. She represents K104. Miss Poison Hi, Ivy. Hi, Hi, Poison Ivy. Hi. Y'all gave me a mic, y'all messed up now. No. <laughs> it's definitely be, you know, a pleasure to be here. But from the DJ perspective and from the music world, how important was um, the musical element to the scoring of the show, given that it obviously was set in you know a time and a place that you know had a lot going on musically? So can you talk a little bit about that? It was very important because music sets the mode, it sets the it sets the time and space, it sets just the rhythm of the whole piece. I mean. They're... 